Brown of Ravenna Academy. Uh, some years ago, when my daughters were young, we went over to the Wisconsin Dells in early August, and we were having a really wonderful family time together. We were driving back to Minneapolis in my little Dodge Stratus. It was hot. A heat wave had rolled through the upper Midwest. It's 100 degrees and humid. And of course, if you've been on a long car trip with young children, you know how this goes. About an hour into the trip, they're throwing juice boxes into each other and pulling each other's hair, and pretty soon the tempers in the car were about matching the temperatures outside. And so there's a little tension in my family. I pulled it into a gas station. I'm pumping gas in my car, kind of grinding my teeth about these misbehaving children of mine and thinking to myself, gosh, they're, they're behaving badly. And this gentleman is pumping gas right next to me. And then he's kind of looking at me and looking at my family. I think he could sense there was some tension in my family. And he looks at me, our eyes kind of met by the gas pump, and he looks at me and he goes, you know, I wish I had two kids. And I thought, oh, plenty of children. <laughs> You have these cherubs, these gifts from God, <laughs> wonderful children, and this poor guy doesn't have any of that. So I turned to him and I said, well, I'm sorry, sir, you, you don't have kids? He looked at me and said, no, I got five kids, I wish I had two. <laughs> We live in the freest and most prosperous nation in the history of the world. We have our challenges, there's no question about it, but there is no people, any place, any time, anywhere, ever, that have experienced more freedom and liberty than those of us fortunate enough to live in the United States of America. And we need to remember one thing as we go into this election, and I promise these guys, since I wasn't scheduled, I'd be off the stage for about four minutes. Uh, from when I started, so I'm already three minutes into it. But we've got to remember this. The United States of America is a great country because we are the freest country. You know, God just didn't happen to make us smarter than everybody else. We are divinely blessed because we've been given so much freedom. That is the genius of about freedom and it's so, such an important principle, but we need to also make sure we make it practical and real. It, we're not free when we're $10 trillion in debt as a nation. We're not free when we just recently had to borrow a half a trillion dollars from the Chinese. We cannot continue to be a free and great nation when we are in debt, $35,000 for every man, woman, and child in the country in federal government debt, not including entitlement programs. We are burdening not just our current economy and prosperity and freedom, we're handcuffing our children and our grandchildren to a wagon of the debt. That's not freedom. We need to make sure we elect people to Congress and to the President and to the United States government who are going to say enough to be in a debtor nation. It is sinking us in terms of our financial ability. When you have to have the federal government be worried about intervening lest we upset the Chinese, lest they stop buying our debt, lest the whole house of cards comes tumbling down, that's an awful, awful scenario for our country. We need to break free of that. We need to talk about breaking free of dependence on foreign oil. States, and boy, am I glad we do. It makes a, a tough decision, but it enforces discipline. The United States is not going to be free of this problem unless we give the President of the United States line out of veto authority. Yeah. I broke a record for the governor of the state of Minnesota for the most vetoes ever issued in the history of the state of Minnesota.
and somebody has to draw the line. But I'm just going to say this in closing. We cannot be a free nation if our children aren't properly educated. They're not going to be properly educated with the system that we have. It's got to be made more accountable. It's got to be made more consumer-friendly. It's got to give people more choices. And we've got to ask them for better results. We can't have a free country if the government takes over the health care system and runs it as a monopoly. We can't do that. Addicted to oil, and we have to pay you know, economic homage to Ahmadinejad and Chavez and Putin and all the crew. We have to break free of that, even if it means in the meantime we're going to have to do some difficult things. And in the end, we also can't be a free country unless we can we make sure that people in our United States military, who are the ultimate defenders of our freedom, are appreciated. <laughs> David Eisenhower said that the responsibility for freedom will not long be entrusted to the timid or the weak. What you're doing here tonight says a lot about our country and our state, but it also says a lot about you. You're willing to stand up, you're willing to show up, and you're willing to say, you know what, these values and principles are worth some of my time, they're worth some of my resources, they're worth some of my voice, they're worth fighting for. We're in a every two-year battle. We're in really a cultural and political battle, as you know. All that the candidates are, are expression of our values and principles. And so I just want to ask you, these things that we care about, these things that we're talking about here tonight, are worth fighting for. So don't give up, and don't get discouraged. You know, the pendulum comes back and forth. Our job, our job is to put in the effort. There's a higher power that is going to give us the results. All right. <laughs> Election. We get Eric Paulson elected to Congress, Michelle Bachman re-elected, get Norm re-elected, hold our own, and maybe grow some in the Minnesota House, and pray that John McCain can climb this up to a battle that he's facing, and that in Minnesota, I think we'll look back and say, that's a pretty good result under some difficult circumstances, so let's go out and make sure we do it. Thanks for coming tonight.